Thank you for coming at this busy time of year. Uh, as you know, uh, Councillor Stroud is not here, so I'm in the chair, so I hope we can all manage uh, the business uh, uh, the best we can. Um, we begin, uh, perhaps, I, I believe there's a new face in the uh, meeting today. Uh, Laura McCormick, have I got that correct? Would you like to say who you are? So Hi, everyone. I'm Laura McCormick. I'm the Deputy Director of Planning. So in Paige's absence this week, she's on vacation. I, I'm just attending to support our planning team here. So, Thank you. Uh, so calling the meeting to order. Uh, first item is approval of the agenda, and there's a, uh, an, a brief addendum uh, relating to 94 Bagot that's included in the agenda, the part of the agenda. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda with the addition? Um, Mac and Liz. Um, are there any, any other additions or corrections or concerns about the agenda? Let's vote on the agenda. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried? Um, next item is the minutes of the last meeting, the July meeting. Uh, they've been circulated. Are there any corrections uh, that anyone wishes to make to the minutes? Seeing none, could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the July meeting? Mac and Liz. Um, then we'll vote on the minutes. All those in favor? That's approved. Thank you. Uh, we have de disclosure of pecuniary interests. Uh, I have 94 bags. A uh, slip. I'm the designer on the project. That's 94 bag, is it? 94 bag, yes. I would like to make a little presentation for the owner because he's not here today. Then I'll leave the room, okay. I presume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fine. No other de disclosures? Fine. Um, there are no presentations, no delegations, no briefings. Um, so we'll proceed to business. And the uh, under a statutory business, we have, I think, about um, seven or eight items. First two are part four properties. Uh, then we have, I think, five part five properties. And then we have a pre-consultation. So um, the first uh, business item is uh, 488 Division Street. Uh, the recommendation is to um, uh, approve demolition of a structure that is a greenhouse at 488 Division Street. Uh, so the um, recommendation is in your agenda. Uh, as I think staff will make a presentation on that. Alex? But Yes. Is that, on? Is that on? There we go. Okay. So an application for demolition under Section 34 of the Ontario Heritage Act has been submitted to demolish a greenhouse structure in the rear yard of 488 Division. Uh, 488 Division is located on the west side of Division Street between Concession Street to the south and Guy Street to the north. The property contains a one and a half story limestone house constructed between 1860 and 1878. This property was designated under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act in 2017. Um, and its designating bylaw notes a number of cultural heritage attributes relating to the Bryant House, which include its gable roof with a brick chimney at the south end, the symmetrical limestone facade, its window op openings with stone sills and voussoirs. So the greenhouse structure that is proposed um, for demolition is not included as a heritage attribute of the property. So staff visited the site um, in mid-July to view the greenhouse structure, um, and photographs have been included as Exhibit C of the staff report. The greenhouse is an informal and haphazard structure. Um, it's constructed with a cement foundation and lower walls a wood structure which is then clad in corrugated metal sheets and plastic um, panels. It doesn't appear to have been used for quite a length of time. It's filled with a lot of uh, debris and odds and bits and bobs of um, garbage. It's not clear when it was last in use um, as a greenhouse or how it was used exactly as a greenhouse. 
um, and it is minimally visible through the north side yard of the property from Division Street. We did have a comment from one of our members um, that due to the size of the greenhouse, it's possible that it may have had some sort of a commercial function at some point, um, and that would be worth um, recording it photographically before its demolition. So staff have included a condition uh, that on the day of demolition, a staff member will be present to um, document and photograph the structure. So upon review of all of the materials, uh, staff have no concerns, the structure is not listed and as part of the, as an attribute of the property and as such it will have no impact on the cultural heritage value or attributes of the property. And so I have a recommendation before you that um, that council support the demolition of the greenhouse subject to the following three conditions. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you. So the proposal is to uh, approve demolition or recommend demolition of this greenhouse, which is not a heritage attribute and which is in pretty poor condition. Are there any uh, questions of, uh, from the committee to staff? Uh, Councillor Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To uh, a question about the greenhouse when it's demolished, I'm really glad. Um, that we're to document the structure so it's to be documented as it's going down because who knows, it might be limestone walls underneath the cement or something. Um, so this becomes like a legal requirement. It's not just a suggestion, it's a legal requirement that staff be available there so you must be notified, I take it. That's correct, Councillor Shaw. So through you, Mr. Chair, um, it is a condition of the heritage permit that staff are notified in advance so that we can be there on the day of demolition to photograph the structure. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from, or from the committee? Uh, the public may um, ask questions or make comments on this application. Are there any input from the public? Seeing none, uh, I think that we want to have the um, uh, motion on the floor, so could I ask someone to uh, approve, the, uh, approve the recommendation to demolish? Okay. Right, so uh, is there a discussion on the motion to demolish? There are comments? I think it's pretty straightforward. This is not a uh, significant uh, building. Um, um, so we'll vote on the motion to demolish, to approve or to recommend demolition of the greenhouse. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, the next item is um, uh, refers to 2493 Highway 2, um, and this is a recommendation for primarily landscaping uh, uh, modifications. Uh, so I think Ryan is going to make a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, this property is at uh, 2493 Highway 2 on the east side of the city. It's on the south side of Highway 2. Uh, it's about a two hectare lot uh, with a one and a half story stone limestone house on it. This is what it appears like uh, from Highway 2. It was designated in 2013 under Part 4 of the Act. Uh, it's has associative value with uh, Hugh McIntyre and Thomas McFadden, who are owners of the house, houses, house over the history. Uh, so it's known as the McIntyre McFadden House, built in the 1850, in 1850s, enlarged about 20 years later. Uh, it suffered serious fire in 2002 and was rebuilt uh, in 2012, 2013. It's a good example of a vernacular style stone house and uh, it's heritage, heritage attributes of interest to this application are specifically the siting I am yelling at everybody, is uh, the siting of the farmhouse uh, well back from the highway, surrounded by open fields, which may maintain that uh, rural character of the area. So before you today is an application uh, to do extensive landscaping in the front portion of the property between the road and the, and the house itself. Uh, that includes the installation of two limestone entrance piers, posts, 
planting of trees along the road and along the driveway, uh, flagstone and paver walkways in various parts of the yard, uh, as well as flower plant plantings around the house and the installation of a slightly larger wooden platform uh, porch on the front of the house. So in terms of our review, uh, we also considered comments that were received from uh, members of the Heritage Committee. And, uh, and we note that the application um, is a modest landscaping plan uh, and is, are compatible with the heritage character of, uh, of both the built form and the rural character of the area. Uh, the proposal has, uh, has the potential to enhance the rural landscape uh, along this, uh, this corridor between Kingston and Gananoque and maintain that, uh, that rural characteristic. So that was circulated to our, our uh, usual agencies. Building permit is required for certain aspects of this proposal. Uh, our engineering staff noted that this area is slotted for road widening in the future and, uh, and encouraged the applicants to set back their gate posts in order to ensure that they remain on private property. Our forestry staff noted uh, that the hydro poles run along the front of this property to ensure a proper setback from the trees from the hydro poles. And, uh, and the, this committee was circulated um, through DASH for this application. And, uh, and one of the members noted, uh, provided some comments, which, uh, which we've addressed in, our, in the report. Um, and Mr. Chair, on uh, saying that, uh, we recommend approval of this application uh, with a couple of conditions, and uh, we're happy to answer questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from the committee about this application? I notice the owner is here, so we could even ask him questions too, if you wish, but uh, generally speaking, it looks uh, pretty straightforward. Are there any questions or comments from members of the public? Seeing none, uh, can we have a motion to um, uh, approve the recommendation that you see in the agenda? Jane and, uh, sorry, yeah, no, I've uh, got Jane and, and Mac, I think. Uh, questions or comments from the committee? Mac? I just like to say these are great improvements. It's a beautiful house, but that big empty field in front kind of, you know, never really did anything for it. So I think it'll be a great improvement. Thanks very much. This? Uh, to echo that, I've driven by there many years when it was burned out, when you were fixing it, and seeing that big flat field always called out for some landscaping, so I think it's just going to be a fabulous addition. Thank you. Thanks. As many of you know uh, I was a previous owner of this property, but I, I don't think that gives me a conflict in any way. I'm certainly pleased that the owners are are taking good care of it and have plans. I think the, the only slight con, uh, hint that I would make is that planting trees is good, uh, but you don't want to hide the house. You don't want, don't want it to disappear. So that, uh, trees should frame the house and not hide it. So that's the, I think that's, that's understood. Any other comments? Then uh, ready, ready to vote on the motion to approve. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you very much. So the next item uh, is, is from uh, uh, part five from um, Heritage Conservation District, 94 Baggett Street. And uh, I think first we'll have Alex make a presentation on this. All right, so 94 Baggett Street, we'd have an application for alteration under Section 42 of the Act. So 94 Baggett Street is located on the northwest side of the street near the intersection with West Street. The subject property contains a two and a half story red brick double house, the other half being uh, 96 Baggett Street, constructed circa 1859. 
So the property was designated as part of the old Sydenham Heritage Conservation District in 2015. It is rated as significant to the district, and as I mentioned previously, it's a two and a half story red brick house. Um, it was constructed for Patrick Hardy, a dry goods merchant in the area. And it does form part of a longer row of buildings that um, form the street edge along Bagot Street within Old Sydenham. Um, I just wanted to point out that the property inventory evaluation form does describe the, the previous balcony or the balcony that is now in partial existence, um, previously in full existence, as wood with iron balustrades containing Greek key motives. Um, I'm not sure if the intention there was to point it out as being of heritage interest, but having looked at it closely, um, it's certainly not um, a very old porch. It may well be 60s, 70s, um, but it was in very poor condition and it has partially been removed for health and safety reasons on the site. So the application um, before you basically seeks to rehabilitate the front elevation of 94 Bagot to accommodate the new interior arrangement of the four dwelling units. Um, there are no additional dwelling units proposed and a heritage permit application for the removal and reconstruction of the rear two-story um, addition on this property was previously approved in May of 2018. <laughs> so I'm just going to go over a few of the key elements, as I understand Max also going to speak um, as the agent for this proposal, but I just wanted to sort of point out the key elements, which are the reconstruction of the front porch. So the third and second and third story elements of the porch have been removed, um, but the cement porch base is being retained and repaired, and onto that will be built the new, uh, a new porch, which um, in discussions with the owner um, is going to be of wood construction and the railings will be in iron. Um, also worth pointing out is uh, the front door existing panel and transom have been removed due to their um, deterioration. And again, through discussions, we've moved towards um, doing a restoration of that front entranceway based on 96 Bagot Street, which is identical. So it's one of those rare instances where we can do a true restoration um, with an exact perfect example of what we need to reconstruct. Um, in terms of the windows, they all comply with the city's policy on window renovations. They are going to be, um, the existing wood frames are going to be maintained with the new aluminum clad windows being inserted within. And that was one comment that we did have from our members. Um, so that can be confirmed. And otherwise it's all small um, repair work to the bricks and to the um, decorative uh, brackets at the third story eve. And in terms of comments from our uh, committee, it was really simply just um, the idea that the restoration of that door should be based on 96 Bagot. We should be using wood materials on the porch and all of that has been um, agreed to with the owner. So um, as of now, the staff, staff have no concerns with the project and um, we support it. And I'm, I'm gonna put the recommendation before you, which is that the alterations at 94 Bagot Street are approved with the details in the application, subject to several conditions before you, um, which include that heritage staff will be circulated the building permit drawings so that we can ensure conformity with what is proposed within the heritage permit. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Uh, I believe, uh, Mac, did you say you wanted to make a presentation on this? Um, uh, you can do that now. Is that uh, we should, just a moment. Okay, sorry. First, let me just uh, confirm with the committee um, that uh, those the dash the submitted dash comments have been adequately recognized by staff, and I believe that's true. So that's right. And um, so then we um, uh, can uh, get input from uh, the public, including uh, the applicant's agent. So if you'd like to uh, uh, go ahead, Mac. Thank you. A lot to, uh, to add. Rudy Alex did a very good job of explaining what's going on. That front porch is, is, uh, is kind of a disaster, as you can see. Um, it's certainly nothing historic about it. In fact, that, that railing is one that could be the, the, the supporting railing or the supporting sort of metal post could be climbed, which is totally not a good idea. And we're certainly going to completely rebuild the wood, the wood entranceway, the wood door to match what's at a 96 Bagot. Um, uh, we, uh, 
you know, the, when, and when we get up to doing, when we get up doing repainting the softened face, we've asked for, for we now to do some minor repairs up there. We're not exactly sure what we're going to get into until we get there, but it'll definitely do it in, uh, in like materials and, uh, and, and keep and duplicate the existing uh, openings. As you can see from the initial drawing, the, uh, the, the porch was a three-story, but there never was a door out on the third story, just a window. So we're, we've gone back to what probably was a, was a two-story porch originally. So I don't think I've got anything more to add. Um, you know, the owner's spending a lot of money in the place. He wants to do it right. Um, and he's, you know, trying to go for sort of, sort of upgrade tenants. So, you know, he's, you know, he'll build the door properly and he's, he's, doing, a, he's doing a real good job on the inside of the place as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> comments, other comment members of the public? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for, pres for the presentation. And thanks to Mac as well for his uh, information. Um, I think this is a vast improvement. Um, it not only looks much better, but it's also safer. And I just want to uh, get out a little bit more on the window that's under the porch. So that looks better. Um, and you're also going to be creating more space down there, right? The uh, photo of the way it looks now looks like it's just a solid concrete block porch. So that's a positive thing. And I will add that I actually lived there uh, myself as a student many years ago in that uh, very unit. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from members of the public? Seeing none, would staff like to respond to uh, what's been uh, raised? No. no, you were satisfied? I think, uh, I think the presentation has made things clear and uh, uh, the drawings of the, the new drawings of the front are, are you know, look uh, quite, quite suitable. So the, um, <clears throat> let's see. So at this point, uh, I'd like to uh, committee to bring the motion on the floor. So could I have a motion to, I, I note by the way that uh, the applicant agent has withdrawn. So that's according to procedure. So could we have a motion to, um, uh, approve staff's recommendation uh, on this property. Liz and Jane. Um, and now staff uh, committee members can make uh, comments on the application. Uh, Catherine. Um, I agree. It's um, a great improvement over uh, the past. It looks beautiful. Um, just walking around Kingston, you see a lot of instances where the brickwork has been repaired, has, or replacement bricks and so on in them. And just to, um, to uh, I guess, uh, suggest that great attention be paid to the color of the mortar and so on when these repairs are being done. Because this is, you know, I mean, although the, the, the porch, the original porch there was an eyesore. In fact, when you look at the brickwork, the brickwork is beautiful. It doesn't look as if there's been any, any repairs to it done. So to try to make it look as, um, as if no work has been done. Mm -hmm. So that would really be on the third floor where that, um, where the third story is coming down from the porch. Uh, yes, that's a good comment. Mm -hmm. Other comments from members of the committee? All right, I think that's fine. I, you know, as staff have commented, this uh, application has evolved in a, quite a satisfactory way with input from heritage staff and the committee, and uh, I think it's certainly a great improvement uh, to what was there. So ready for the, uh, to vote on the motion uh, to recommend approval to council. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you very much. Mac? <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, we continue with the next application, which uh, is uh, relates to 286 Johnson Street, some rebuilding and replacements at the rear of the property, and uh, Alex will give a presentation uh, to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we have an application under section 42 of the Act for alteration and demolition. The subject property, uh, 286 Johnson Street, is located on the south side um, of the street, east of Barry Street and opposite St. Mary's Cathedral. The subject property contains uh, a termina the terminating two-story brick residence of the Wesley Terrace, um, which was constructed in 1875 and stretches from uh, 272 Johnson Street all the way to 286 Johnson Street. The property is designated under both Part 4 of the Act, uh, which was in 1975, and again under Part 5 of the Act as part of the old Sydenham Heritage Conservation District. Um, the property was designed by William Coverdale and constructed in 1856, and the district plan identifies it as being significant to the district. Um, the uh, property evaluation form describes the Wesley Terrace as a distingu distinguished address directly across from a cathedral. The extended repetition of classical elements, semi-circular arched door openings, window openings, louvered shutters, parapeted side gables, with chimneys with the gable peaks and stone corbels at the eaves, as well as the excellent sense of proportion between the three bays on each story make for an extremely satisfying composition. I would agree. <laughs> so the proposal before you, um, as um, explained, is all, um, all related to the rear of the property. Okay, it shows up better on the screen than on my screen. Um, so the proposal includes um, the demolition and re rebuilding of that, the rear kitchen nook, which is at the ground floor rear there, as well as the replacement of all the windows on the south elevation. So all the windows on uh, that kitchen nook, that in the infill addition um, at the center, um, as well as all the windows on the historic building, all facing south. So staff visited the site at the end of June to meet with the owner and also to speak with the agent and to view the property. Um, so the rear elevation of the property consists of this two-story rear addition, which is indicated on the 1908 fire insurance plan. So it's on the west half of the principal building. There's also this more recent uh, rear infill uh, to the center one-story addition, which seems to be about uh, 2,000 based on our permits. And then there's also the rear, um, this kitchen nook that is off the two-story addition. Um, the date's not known of construction, but it appears to be a relatively contemporary addition. So in terms of the demolition of the kitchen nook, um, staff um, don't, it's not listed as a heritage attribute of the property, it's relatively recently built, and so its demolition um, is not going to impact the heritage value or attributes of the district. Um, Additionally, this rear elevation is uh, largely invisible, if not invisible from public view. Um, you can't see it from Barry Street, nor from the lane behind. Um, so really the only views are from the rear of this, of this house. So in terms of the replacement of all the windows, um, staff do acknowledge that uh, the replacement windows are white vinyl units, um, either casement or vertical sliding sash as they're replacing the windows, essentially the design and form of the windows like for like. Um, they do not comply with the policy on window renovations in, or buildings or with the section 5.3.2 of uh, the district plan. However, given that the proposed windows are replacing non-original, non-period windows, the majority of which are already vinyl units, staff do feel that the replacement of these win windows will have little to no impact on the character of the district. Staff have advised the applicant of our concerns regarding uh, vinyl, just in terms of longevity, sustainability, as well as their appearance, and have encouraged the use of a, a tinted uh, color vinyl unit to soften their appearance. Um, and furthermore, the majority of the window replacements relate to windows that are on non-historic and modern additions, uh, predominantly the infill, one straight infill addition, the kitchen nook, as well as the uh, heavily modified window opening on the second floor of that rear addition. Um, in terms of the roof, they want to replace it with like-for-like -like black asphalt shingles, and which is in keeping with the plan and also compatible with the agent architectural style of the property. 
So in conclusion, um, staff do acknowledge that there are several components of this application that do not conform to the district plans. However, all of these components relate to alterations on the rear elevation, um, the south, which is not visible from Johnson Street, Barry Street, or the laneway to the rear. We have encouraged the applicants to use traditional and natural building materials. However, as proposed, the alterations are compatible with the evolved character of this rear elevation and do not affect any of the heritage attributes of the district. And we do feel that in reviewing the goals and policies of the district plan, we are satisfied the application meets the intent. So um, in terms of comments from our members, um, we did, um, we did receive comments from a couple members um, with regards to the propo proposed vinyl windows, raising the issue of uh, longevity, sustainability, and how they appear on a heritage property. Um, and also, um, there was questions about the vinyl material uh, proposed as siding on the rear kitchen nook. Um, I did have some confirmation from the applicant that the, the simulated wood product on the rear kitchen nook is actually a composite wood material that is then have some sort of a polymer um, coating on it. So we have included a condition to, um, to, to see samples of this material and confirm that it is acceptable, as well as to confirm um, that the vinyl, obviously we know there's a variety of vinyl window units, and so we've, con we've asked for condition to include uh, details of those windows. So the recommendation before you is to approve the alterations at 286 Johnson Street. Uh, subject to the following conditions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So again, uh, we have to confirm the that our dash input uh, inputs were uh, correctly recognized by the staff, and I believe that's the case. So that's fine. And the next stage in this procedure is to um, ask um, if members of the public wish to. Um, make uh, comments or questions? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Firstly, a question on page 69 of the um, agenda under the cultural heritage analysis, second paragraph, you use the word contemporary edition, and I don't know which period contemporary is referring to. Is it Victorian? Is it 2000? Is it? And I wonder if we could be a little bit more exact in those sort of statements. Um, secondly, as soon as I see that word vinyl, I hope this committee is shuddering. Um, in 10 years, the owners will be back to replace the vinyl windows. We've argued this at this committee so often and so much. And yes, they will always come up with the arguments that, well, they're out of sight. Well, they may be today, but we don't know what's going to happen to that property. A lot of people use those back alleyways and look into those buildings. And in a building and an area of this heritage importance, I would hope that you will have serious concerns about approving anything that is vinyl. Thank you. Other comments from members of the public? Um, yes, so now we, uh, we need to put the um, recommendation on the floor, so could I have a motion to uh, approve the staff recommendation for this property? Okay, Liz and, and uh, Catherine. Um, so now, uh, oh, sorry, we didn't, uh, did staff want to respond to... Uh, any comments? No, I think you've covered them. So, um, so now we, uh, the committee, have the uh, possibility of making comments on this property. And I think you're already aware there's uh, there are concerns about, particularly about the use of vinyl. Uh, so, Mac, did you wish to start? A couple of questions. Um, one where it says uh, the new Sanu low slope, uh, low pitch black asphalt shingles. From as far as I know, they haven't made those for about 15 or 20 years. Um, if they were going to use black shingles, it's it's a low pitch roof. They'd have to uh, they'd have to do some some water shield or something underneath it, or do a uh, or do like a two ply modified bitumen roof on it. Um, the I don't I don't believe you get low slope shingles anymore. Um, I haven't seen them forever, anyways. 
And I guess I've got a concern also about what the simulated vertical wood cladding is, but, but the staff say they're going to check on that before they approve it to be installed. Um, I see all the windows in the back are casement windows, all the proposed new windows are casement windows, I believe. Um, the, the, how, the two windows in the actual limestone on the second floor, are they going to stay as double hung? So the, the, those two replacement windows, are the, oh, they're, so yes, they are going to stay as double hung, sorry, excuse me, okay. And, and, and I definitely have concerns about vinyl. Um, uh, I think a good alternative to vinyl is the Marvin Integrity window, which is a which is the fiberglass window, which does stand up and lasts as long as virtually any window. And it's not as expensive as the metal clad ones, but it's it's more expensive than the vinyl windows. But it has very nice details as well. It doesn't have the ugly flat vinyl details that you always get. Um, it's a nicely detailed window, so that would be my advice that they look at that as an option. But I don't like the vinyl windows either. Thank you. Um Councilor Shell. Thank you, Mr. Um, this application reminds me of um, when Commissioner Beach gave us a talk years ago. She had a report, and I haven't seen it since, showing that properly restored heritage homes, properties, are much more valuable than ones that are done with sort of half and half, which is what this one is. Um, it also, as a counselor, lets me know, you know, some people, especially if it's going to be a rental, vinyl's fine. But if it's something that it's your home and you are wanting to keep the value of your home, it is much preferable to have um, heritage type windows. Even what Mac was talking about with the, the fiberglass, which I like very much, thank you. Um, because it, it improves the value of your home. Vinyl is not going to give you back the value that the home could give you. In a modern home, sure, it, it's the plastic type things. Uh, it doesn't make much difference. But boy, in a heritage property, it makes a huge difference in terms of the value, especially for resale. So it's more for me an economic uh, thought that it's, it's preferable to spend the money ahead on the, the type of finish that is going to make your house as valuable as it can be. So I agree about the vinyl. I realize nobody can see it, but in the long run, if you want to sell it and somebody's looking around and they know what it could be, um, you're, you're reducing the value of your property. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Council Shell, would you take the chair, please? The chair and recognize you. Yes, I'd like to speak on this. I think uh, there's already been concern to expressed about the materials used in this uh, uh, renovation. And um, I guess, to, you know, the, I could um, uh, look at this in a number of ways. Um, one way is, is to stress the importance of supporting the Heritage Conservation District Plan. I mean, I think we all familiar with this. Um, and since Council, in its wisdom, has uh, um, does no longer allow this committee to make recommendations on alterations in this district, this plan is really the you know really important in guiding renovations. So let me just uh, I just looked up a few uh, quotations from the plan. Um, section 5.3.2, avoid use of white vinyl windows. It doesn't say white vinyl windows should be avoided. It says avoid. 5.3.3, vinyl and aluminum siding are not acceptable claddings for a new addition. We're not, not talking about uh, something that's visible or not. Section 6.27, which refers to new construction. Acceptable cladding materials include, there's a list of which um, vinyl is not, uh, well, includes things like brick and stone and stucco and so on. It also includes, I think, um, a cement board type uh, siding, which we've come across before. I'm not sure whether that is uh, or could be 
what the applicants have in mind, what they say is simulated wood. Um, and there could be other products that uh, are equally good and may not be actually cement. But uh, I think uh, staff did have some uncertainty about the cladding that was proposed and they proposed to look at it. But uh, again, I think we have to go by the guidelines. And uh, I guess the main point in uh, argument from staff is that the rear of the house is essentially invisible to the public. But I think we really have to do better than that. And I think the guidelines, the district want to do better than that. They want to uh, kind of set and improve standards of appearance, not just to the public walking by to the street, but to the owners and the neighbors so that everybody in the district understands that we're trying to um, maintain a certain quality of environment. And uh, that's why they say no vinyl, that's why they say no other things. So I'm going to vote against this recommendation and I hope uh, other committee members will think uh, carefully about it as well. Thank you. Thank you, I return the chair. Other comments from the committee? Are we ready for the motion then? Motion to approve the recommendation. I should say that this recommendation, whether we approve it or not, can go to council or staff can modify it if they wish. We, can, we, we, we do not have the power to stop uh, this motion going to council. But when it goes to council, my understanding is there will be a statement, it'll be recognized that the committee has made a statement about their views on the, on the application. So I think it's important, even if we can't stop it or change it, we can make a statement. So, can most folks still vote to do so? Uh, yes, so please, uh, voting may be close, so please think carefully and vote clearly. So uh, please vote uh, for those in favor of the recommendation, please vote. Those opposed? The motion uh, fails. Thank you very much. Uh, we continue with applications, I think uh, two applications in Berryfield, which is also the Heritage Conservation District, uh, 251 Main Street, and uh, we have someone to present this. Close. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this application is in the village of Berryfield, uh, 251 Main Street. It is, I think, the largest uh, residential property in the district. Uh, it's on the west side of Main Street, south of uh, the intersection with Kingston Road 15. The property contains a contemporary dwelling built in 1975. Um, it's a one-story appearance from the road. And it was uh, recently, this uh, property was before this committee for a detached garage application to the north part of the property. So this uh, property, again, as I mentioned, was built in the 1970s. It is rated as a non-heritage building in the district. Uh, however, the property itself and the building reflects some of the, uh, the goals and, and uh, heritage attributes of the district itself, uh, which are outlined here, including some of the historic views down the, down the street uh, and the siding on top of the escarpment, as well as the, uh, the scale and massing of the building itself. So this is the site plan. The applicants are proposing, uh, are requesting heritage approval to construct a one-story, six and a half meter by six and a half meter uh, detached garage, which you can see on the plan is off to the south, north is to the right of your screen. This is the garage that was approved uh, about a year ago um, at the north end of the property. So the garage itself is to be uh, two bays um, and clad in pre-stained cedar shingles uh, in a light gray color. The roofing is to be cedar shakes. Uh, both of these match with the, uh, the existing house, which is similar shades. 
Uh, the plan uh, up before you was initially submitted with a covered breezeway that was to attach this building to the house. Uh, it was noted that this was in uh, conflict with the village plan and the applicants have, uh, have agreed to remove that from the plan or from the, uh, their proposal. So this is a close up of the, uh, of the building that's proposed with the cedar shingles and the, the pitch roof. In terms of our review, uh, the proposed garage was uh, reviewed against the policies of the district plan uh, and it meets the intent of the Berryfield Heritage Conservation District plan policies with respect to its location, uh, the materials chosen, the window and roof design and the relationship to the main house. Uh, we support this application uh, and we submitted it or we circulated it to uh, the usual agencies. Uh, building staff of course note that a building permit is required uh, and then the planning team noted no concerns with the zoning in this area. It was circulated similarly to this uh, group and uh, after responding to a couple of questions that were submitted, uh, there were no outstanding concerns raised by, by the Heritage Committee and, uh, and therefore we recommend approval of this application with a couple of conditions. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Ryan. Um, the next step is to confirm the dash comments, and I think um, mine was the only one, and I'm satisfied with that. Um, so, um, do members of the, any members of the public wish to make uh, comment or ask questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, can we then? Um, um, have a motion to put this recommendation on the floor, Mac and Councillor Shell. Um, so, members of the committee uh, can now make comments on, uh, are invited to make comments on the application, Mac. That's looking garage. I think I'll with it. My only question is, uh, is it a cedar shake roof or a cedar shingle roof? Oh, good, great, perfect. Because cedar, because cedar shingles don't last anymore. <laughs> cedar shingles don't last anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cedar. yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah. Shakes, okay, great. Thank you, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, just a question. Uh, page 92, um, under consultation with Heritage Kingston, it says um, the applicant has confirmed that the detat uh, sorry, uh, staff have confirmed the location of the existing attached garage on the south end of the building, but I don't see where there was in um, any of the photographs and so on that there was an attached garage on the south end of the building. Mm -hmm. um, right, uh, perhaps staff can uh, respond to that. Uh, Mr. Chair, the attached garage, and I do have, we have a picture, I think, is discreetly uh, hidden on the end, south end of the building. So you, it's tucked into the side of the building. Um, if we go back to the map. Um, uh, okay. Oops. It's coming. Um, is it that little? It's right, it's right in here. They had to pull in and drive it in the side, so it's right there. Oh. If that helps. Yeah, so it is quite invisible. I think. Um, other comments, questions? Seeing none, um, we'll vote on the motion. Um, all those in favor to approve the um, construction of the garage? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. So the next uh, application is um, St. Mark's Church, uh, 268 Main. Uh, the, um, alterations to uh, allow a construction of a new barrier-free access uh, uh, to the building. Um, so Ryan will present that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This one is uh, 
almost right across the street from the one that we just looked at. Uh, it is a Part 5 designated property in the Berryfield District, uh, and it's on the east side of Main Street. We all know the, uh, the landmark uh, church, heritage attribute of the district, St. Mark's. Uh, it's a Gothic Revival church built in the 1840s. Uh, it's actually listed as an attribute in the district itself uh, and its location on the, the high point of the land. So what is before you today is an application uh, to construct uh, barrier-free access, new barrier-free access into the church. The alterations include new front steps, uh, to alterations to the chest steps, which are here, the construction of a new ramp uh, on the south side of the building um, with uh, concrete planters to help screen the to help screen the ramp, as well as uh, two barrier-free parking spaces along the south side of the building, uh, and the construction of a uh, metal handrail painted gray. Uh, the new um, wood threshold is to be uh, added to level the entrance into the church itself, uh, and there's some minor wood and masonry repairs, uh, as well as automatic door openers are proposed. So in terms of our analysis, uh, the, uh, the landmark, as a landmark and a heritage attribute of the district, the alterations, of course, to this church uh, are need to be carefully considered. Uh, but as equally important is the consideration of providing dign dignified and easy access into the building for those with uh, mobility challenges. So the current barrier-free ramp, uh, if you've ever been to the church, is on the north side of this building. Uh, it's a narrow metal ramp uh, built over, tire, over top of an existing uh, concrete porch, and, uh, and it's, it's difficult to access, uh, and is a sharp, it enters into a sitting area off the main sanctuary with a sharp U-turn to get into the actual sanctuary itself, so it's, it is difficult and challenging and, uh, and needs to be replaced. So the Berryfield plan itself has uh, policies, uh, section 4.9 of the plan. Uh, that pertain to um, accessibility alterations uh, and the needs of, as well as conserving the heritage value of the district. Uh, and these policies note that, quote, modifications to the building and public spaces are permitted and encouraged in, uh, to improve accessibility, unquote. Similarly, um, Parks Canada's standards and guidelines include accessibility uh, recommendations and, and uh, policies in, in, their, uh, in their document. Uh, namely that uh, respecting the location of existing entrances and porches when providing new ramps uh, and exploring all options for modifications to existing porches is better, of course, than uh, blasting new entrances into, the, into a heritage resource. So we uh, reviewed these. Uh, the application um, was submitted with detailed plans uh, by Colburn and Kemble Architects, as well as a heritage impact statement by uh, Andre Scheinman. And uh, they note that they've explored a number of options uh, before they came to this uh, proposal and found that this was the least impactful and, uh, and most successful way of, uh, of providing dignified and uh, barrier-free access into the church itself. And, uh, and therefore we, uh, based on our review, have, uh, are supporting this application. We did circulate, of course, and uh, our building staff note that a permit is required uh, for this. Uh, they do note that uh, a tactile strip or um, attention indicator is required at the base of the, uh, the ramp where it meets the parking lot. Uh, this will be, uh, or won't impact the heritage value of the, of the property, uh, be minimal. Um, fire and rescue note that they, you need to, the applicant needs to ensure continued fire access to the building. Uh, and Kingston Hydro notes that uh, there are some underground electrical services in this area and they need to be located before they start digging. So those have been provided to the applicant and they will be uh, addressed through building permit. And this uh, committee was circulated on this application noting no concerns. And Mr. Chair, the motion is before you and we recommend approval. Thank you, Ryan. I believe the um, dash comments were adequately addressed. Um, and there really were no concerns expressed by the committee. Um, uh, um, the public can make uh, comments and input to this application. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think the uh, design is uh, optimal and the drawings are excellent. Very clear what's going to happen and uh, the explanation fits in very well with that. So um, very high praise. All the best for the work. 
Thank you. Any other comments? Peter? No, I would really echo that. The legislation came in about 12, 13 years ago, saying that all public buildings had to be accessible. It really produced some difficult situations, um, mostly because there was just no space around some buildings. I believe there are two churches in Harrowsmith where the ramps start on the other church and cross in the middle. Um, St. Mark's has the odd situation of being high, um, and the design here is, is beautifully done. I think, I hope you will also read the arguments for why the architects did not choose the other two options, because they will be important in future uh, applications to remember what can go wrong. Mm. Uh, it's so easy to say, oh, well, all you do is put a ramp, and uh, it isn't at all if you've gone through that process. So congratulations on getting this application, and I hope you can approve it. Any other comment from the public? Right, um, can we have the motion on the floor now? Can someone move and second it? Liz and um, Catherine and Jane. Uh, so comments from the committee? Questions from the committee? C committee members are very happy. I think uh, it, it appears that the architects and heritage staff have done a good job and they're always, you know, it's always somewhat regrettable to make changes uh, of this nature, but they are necessary and this has been very well done. So, um, ready for the vote to approve uh, the alterations uh, at St. Mark's Church. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Approved. Uh, we carry on with um, uh, 216 Ontario Street, City Hall. This is uh, uh, an application, again, relating to required safety uh, updates, uh, alarm and uh, suppression system installation in City Hall. And Ryan will make the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, indeed, uh, this committee knows this building well. It's a National Historic Site. It's designated under Parts 4 and 5 of the Heritage Act. Uh, it's also located in the uh, Market Square District. It's in the Market Square District. And of course, this is the area view of the, of the property. The, uh, in, in addition to the, the national and uh, exterior uh, designations and, and protection on this property, in, uh, importantly, in... Uh, 2010, uh, a number of uh, interior features in this building were also designated under Part 4 of the Act. Uh, and they include uh, the plaster work, uh, the interior stonework, and, uh, and surviving wood uh, framing, uh, remnants of the historic jails and police station, as well as a number of rooms specifically, uh, McDonald, Counter, Cataraqua, and Queen Elizabeth rooms, as well as this, build this room and on Memorial Hall at the other end. Uh, and the Victoria Library and Dome and the, and the Seth Thomas Clock. So what is before you today is an application uh, under Section 33 of the Act, um, and I should clarify that. Uh, the, the designations under Part 5 of the Heritage, which is the Heritage District, the Market Square District, apply to the exterior only. So this application before you is for interior alterations exclusively, and, and therefore, the, proceed, the procedures and uh, policies of the district plan uh, and the procedures under Part 5 um, do not apply in this case. So this is treated as a Part 4 uh, application for process purposes. So the application is to install uh, new fire alarm and suppression systems throughout the building. Uh, this includes the removal of the existing systems and the installation of new heat detectors uh, and various pull stations and new announcement system. Uh, as well as um, new piping, sprinkler heads, uh, and hose cabinets throughout the building. Uh, detailed plans were prepared by SNC-Lavalin uh, Infrastructure Engineering, 
uh, and, uh, and are included in your agenda package. Uh, without, um, I, I would note that the focus of this application for this group and for heritage staff has been uh, the alterations that affect those interior attributes that I noted uh, and that are noted in detail in your agenda package. Uh, but the plans uh, that were submitted include the plan for the entire building, which includes areas that uh, have little or are not included as heritage attributes uh, and are outside of our scope. Uh, so without going into extensive detail on every um, location of every sprinkler head and, and smoke detector, um, the plans are included in your agenda package. Um, we've outlined in the report certain areas by floor uh, that uh, and how, how they are be addressed in relationship to the attributes of those floors. Um, some of interest that uh, I wanted to bring up in this presentation uh, had to do with, uh, with some of these rooms here. I think the most, um, some of the most challenging uh, parts of this project um, have to do with um, the main floor corridor uh, on the first floor of this building, which is the picture up on the top left on your screen. Uh, there are a number of unknowns in this project, including what lies beneath the ceiling, above the ceiling in that area, beneath the floor above it. Um, so in the worst case scenario, the two inch line for the water uh, suppression system, uh, fire suppression system, uh, would have to be outside of that uh, ceiling. So we have, uh, we had a site meeting uh, back in the 13th of July with a number of members of this committee and the project manager, uh, uh, Mr. Rampel walked us around the building. Uh, this area, uh, they are, are attempting to, uh, if they cannot put the, the lines inside of the ceiling, uh, to have them painted to match the surroundings, the ceiling and the, and the, the cornice, uh, and to have them designed so that they fit into uh, this, the, the detailing and around the detailing as best they can to be as discreet as, as possible. Um, the other, one of the other challenging rooms is the Victoria Library, which is the, uh, the clock room, the round room that you see in the top right on your screen. Uh, it's challenging, again, because uh, limited space to hide the, the piping in the ceilings. Um, the applicants are proposing a, to have a custom designed pipe that is welded in an oval to actually follow the curve of the room and tuck it in where the ceiling and the walls meet uh, to, and paint it so that it, uh, it blends with the surroundings to try to make it as discreet as possible. Uh, for uh, rooms such as this one and uh, Memorial Hall, there's a full attic above us, um, so the entire system will be concealed in above the ceiling itself. Um, and the, uh, the sprinkler heads, these concealed sprinkler heads, as you see on the screen, look like little, basically little hockey pucks that are, have a plate over them and they're they blended, they're painted to match and are discreetly positioned throughout the room um, as best as possible. Uh, as there are a number of unknown factors uh, in this project, um, including designated substances, uh, space and separation constraints, staff have included in our recommendation uh, that any minor deviations from the submitted plans, um, which meet the intent of the overall approval uh, and, and uh, identified heritage attributes, as described, uh, be delegated to the director of planning um, for review and approval as necessary. The uh, applicant and the consultants have reviewed the heritage character uh, and existing conditions of this building in detail, as you can tell by the, by the plans, um, and have prepared this, uh, this interve their intervention plans to take these elements into consideration. Uh, in accordance with standard seven of the federal standards and guidelines, the Parks and Canada's, and, uh, and upon review of all of the submitted materials, uh, staff have, uh, are supporting this application with a number of conditions. We did circulate this application. Uh, building permit is required. Uh, the environment team uh, notes uh, proper uh, designated substances assessment and uh, management is required. Uh, and Kingston Hydro um, is willing to work for, uh, to get access to the electrical vault. And this was circulated to uh, members of this committee and uh, no concerns were expressed. So Mr. Chair, our recommendation is before you. Uh, and, if, and this is a, a complicated one, so I understand Mr. Rempel is here from facilities, um, who's the project manager on this one, uh, if there's any specific technical questions on, on that. Thank you very much, Ryan. Um, there's been some uh, discussion about whether this is 
really a part four or part five application because uh, the part five district guidelines normally do not uh, extend to the interior. Uh, so I, I think we need to clarify that because it has to do with how, how the procedures work. And so I'm going to call a five minute uh, bathroom break or whatever clarification break to make sure we get on track. So we'll, we'll take a brief recess. We're going to have a further presentation by Rob Crothers on the piping and alarm system and all that. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, confusion there. Uh, we'll carry on with this application. And uh, there was confusion about whether this application should be dealt with according to part four or part five procedures. Uh, but um, I think we've agreed that it's part four because it's entirely interior and part five guidelines do not apply to interiors of buildings. Uh, but they are, the, the interior of this building is covered uh, well covered by uh, part four designation. So uh, the next step then is to ask whether members of the committee have questions of staff um, or agents about the application relating to uh, sprinklers and alarms installations. So are there any questions? Perhaps I'll ask one. I, I, sort of tried to uh, understand all the drawings, but they're a bit difficult. But I understand that the uh, regulations require, in a room like this, there has to be so many fire sprinklers and so on, uh, and that, that has to come. Um, and th looking at the drawings, there seem to be uh, many, many fire alarms. I wasn't exactly sure how many fire alarms are required, and and what the you know what the uh, what the situation is there? Can can anyone uh, explain that to me, uh, Mr. Chair? This might be a good opportunity to introduce the committee to the project manager for uh, facilities yes. for the city of Kingston. Uh, Jeff Rempel is here, and perhaps uh, he or our representative from the contractor can uh, can speak to that. Mm -hmm. With regards to the number of uh, fire alarm devices that you need, they're all regulated by a standard, uh, ULCS 524. The reason that you might find that there's, there's several more than the two bells you currently have is the addition of the voice communication system that we're adding to this building. In order for us to meet the audibility levels required by the building code, we have to add a number of, uh, of such devices. So um, they're, uh, they're pre-calculated, uh, it's to achieve uh, the, the proper audibility. It, it's one thing to broadcast a sound and make sure everybody hears the sound. It's another thing to broadcast uh, a voice message and have everybody understand it properly. We've all been in places, uh, shopping malls or things like that, where a message will come through a, a paging system and we sit and we wonder what was said exactly because it wasn't intelligible. Uh, by adding <clears throat> excuse me, a number of these devices, we can reduce the, uh, the output on these, uh, these speakers and we can get a, a clearer message broadcast. This is why you'll find that there's probably more than you expected on the drawings. Mm -hmm. Fine, I, I understand a sort of uh, traditional understanding that there was a, one big fire alarm and the whole building heard it and went out, but now things are a little different uh, and uh, I, I guess that's, that's a good thing. Uh, thank you, are there any other questions for um, staff on the installation of fire alarm and sprinklers. Um, I had a, a comment that I just sort of tossed around a little bit that if you look at the recommendation, um, sorry, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, uh, let me ask if members of the public would like to make uh, comments or ask questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
So I'm going to say something obvious, um, but I want to get it on the record because the building's going to stay in operation while the, the renovations are going on, right? It's not going to be like the central library branch that they closed down for two years and it's not in operation while they're doing the renovations. So the systems that we have in place now, they're going to stay operational while the new systems are being put in. Right? So there's issues around that. There's a lot of care and pre-consideration and that kind of thing that's needed. So just want to make sure that uh, that's being dealt with. And then I've got two additional points around the general theme. I'm greatly in favor of the project. I think it's much needed. Um, we've got a you know mid-19th century building here. Um, great um, heritage value, but it's also a functioning building. It's a busy uh, place. And while you're updating the tech capabilities of the building, why not do a couple of other very simple projects? And one of them is putting a clock in this room. It'd be pretty nice to have, right? And the other one is citizens who come in here, sometimes for the first or second time, it can be a little bit of an intimidating place. It'd be wonderful to have a little simple tech device at the, the front desk saying, Council meeting, council chambers at 7.30, or this committee meeting is over there in this room at this time. Simple and obvious, but we don't have it. So it might be outside the scope of the project that's currently defined, but I want to put it on the record that those two improvements are much needed and might not happen this time, but it'll be in the minutes and people are going to read that and they're going to say, aha, you're right, and let's do it as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Those are good questions, comments. Would any staff like to respond, particularly about the sort of phasing in of the new and the old uh, uh, alarm systems? Address that. Uh, Jeff Rempel. Yeah, the building will be occupied while the improvements are made. Uh, the system will be fully functional while the improvements are made. So as we bring with the new system on board, uh, the old system will be in place, uh, and then the activation will just be switched over. Uh, we know that this building will be occupied, it's used, it's booked, it's a great heritage resource. Um, we recognize that. So it'll be phased uh, extensively to not interrupt uh, as much as possible. Yeah, thank you, and I hope some staff will... Keep in mind the possibility of taking advantage of this work to install new electronic uh, aids to, uh, for the public and so on. So uh, I think uh, we can uh, ask for the motion to go on the floor. Uh, so we can have a motion to approve the uh, recommendation that you see uh, in, in your um, agenda. Uh, to approve the alterations the, uh, for the piping and the fixtures, etc. Councillor Shell and uh, Mac. Um, now, this is a part four recommendations, so we can make amendments, uh, changes to the recommendations and conditions, and so on. So, uh, or uh, discuss them so the, the um, application is open for discussion and possible amendment if uh, if uh, if committee wishes um, I'm uh, inclined to make uh, an amendment myself so Councillor Shell could you take the chair I'll take the chair <laughs> um, I don't suppose this is really necessary, but looking at the nation, it seemed appropriate to me uh, that it should start out with a recommendation, um, as is recognized in the report, um, really recommendation, sorry, condition one might be, where practicable, all piping for the alarm and suppression system shall be located in concealed spaces. 
I mean, that's the understanding of the whole project that this should be done. But I think it's I think it'd be good practice to have that clear in the recommendations. So somewhere along the line, if a contractor says, well, it'll be easier to leave it exposed and try to hide it, that there'll be a kind of statement that that's what uh, this committee wants. We want the piping to be concealed where practicable. So I, I'm moving uh, that amendment, uh, new recommendation one, uh, where practicable, all piping for the alarm suppression system shall be located in concealed spaces. Uh, sorry, you're... I'm going to ask for a seconder. Catherine, thank you. And uh, if you'd like to speak to the amendment. Uh, I, I think I spoke as much as I wish, uh, as I need to. Uh, it's, it's a kind of a... Um, a motherhood statement, if you like, but uh, as I say, somewhere down the line, um, the situation may arise where there's a temptation to take the easy route to uh, solving problems, and uh, I think the committee should make its preference clear. So that's that's my view. Thank you, Mac. I just wasn't clear. Did they, did they say they'd be hidden wherever possible, or that all the fire things be hidden? I, I missed that. It's the word where practicable, which leaves, leaves a lot of slack. No. And comments from staff? Do you have any comments on the amendment? If staff has any comments? Sure. Are there any comments from staff on this? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we have no concerns with that addition. That's uh, basically the intent of, of our recommendation, so I, I think it's acceptable. Thank you. Any other comment the committee? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor of the amendment? Thank you, that's carried, and I return the chair. Thank you very much. Um, so we have the uh, recommendation as amended. Are there any further comments, questions? Then ready for the motion to approve the recommendation as amended. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. So that's carried. Right, the, the last business item is a pre-consultation, again, relating to City Hall, uh, this time to the condition of uh, the limestone steps on the uh, Ontario Street uh, side of the building. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just want to introduce Rob Crothers, who's one of the project managers with, um, with Facilities Management and Construction Services. So he's here today because um, they would like to do a pre-consultation with the committee um, with regards to the north and south uh, exit steps at the front of City Hall. Um, and the intention here is to give you a sense of where they're at with the type of preventative measure um, that they would like to um, to apply uh, until such time as the stairs will be fully reconstructed. So here's Rob. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rob Crothers. I'm a project manager, facilities management, construction services, assigned to prevent those stairs from falling in and the water from flooding the basement. Um, the um, the last, well, I'll just get right into this, I guess. Um, what we're recommending is a pro material called MG Crete by MCO Technologies, which was used on the central steps in the area circled in red. Those were uh, wear marks and divots, and if you go and take a look at them outside now, they have been leveled off. They still look like patches, but it's much safer. Um, Subsequently, we've learned that we can use iron oxide to tint the color. Um, these steps are not limestone, they're a, a granite. So it's a slightly different situation, but we, can, we will be able to tint the color to, uh, to get to the uh, limestone color. And what we would like to do is do a test patch. So at the end of all this, we really want to see whether this stuff is going to work and whether we can make it look well. Um, so those are the front steps. You, I can't see too well. But, 
Uh, certainly, halfway up on the right-hand side is a patch. And it's wearing well, but it doesn't look good. That was done just before the uh, Prime Minister's visit and was, uh, we didn't really know how it was going to work out. Uh, it was done by Santine Masonry, and uh, certainly those steps are much safer. Uh, close above it, we even had to rebuild an, an edge of the uh, a nosing area of the tread. And that was completed two years ago. Uh, these stairs are interesting because they um, are different. You can see the difference in stone for the steps versus the sidewall, and that they are founded on a concrete uh, beveled slab that you can see in the basement near the Shoal Tower room. Um, and so that's all concrete, and that's completely different from what the exit steps are constructed of. They are supported on a limestone arch. This is the traditional construction um, in a crawl space chamber, which is at this time of year very humid and dank and uh, has a, an odor of mold. It's not used for anything and they're kept closed. But in the wintertime or in a rainstorm, it's a waterfall. It really does seep through the construction it's, it starts on the, uh, the cracked stones on the treads, all the joints that were filled with um, heritage mixed mor mortar two years in a row. The most recent one is last year, and that just doesn't, it doesn't work for the, uh, the, the need to have the steps cleared. Uh, the guys don't use straight salt, they use an ice melt material, which is a little milder on the limestone and on the steps, but it still has to be kept cleared. And what we get is a lot of freeze-thaw with that sort of um, um, salt in the water, and it's been breaking apart those stones for some time. So this is the one, I guess this is the north end archway, and this is the south end archway. Those rooms get filled with water and it pours down the steps and our maintenance team um, has to wet vac this up and during one of the spring uh, storms that we had, they just plugged it in and dammed everything and it just, it went all day. So it's becoming a, a real problem. Um, it's very difficult to say whether or not those arches are still stable. There is certainly a crack in the one to the north, this one right here, which is substantial. So they would have been constructed out of an arched base and then mortar on top to lay the steps in. Um, over time, water's leached the lime out of the mortar, it's turned to sand, and it's getting inside these lower stones. So on the north end, um, looking up the steps, and it, it's, it's a good idea to go out and take a close look at them because there are new stones on the, like on the right-hand side of the railing, and there are cracked stones right up on top of the set of stairs. Then all the way down, all the steps, uh, you can see what's happening over time to limestone, as you probably are very well aware what can happen. And then, of course, even on the side buttresses, side railings, the, uh, the joints there are, are a problem. We found that the heritage mortar mix works pretty well on vertical joints, but not on horizontal ones at all. So there's one new stone uh, that was put, I'm not actually sure when it was put in, but up to the right, you can see a diagonal crack in another one. The joints are all losing their, their mortar. These were raked out two, two and a half inches uh, deep and filled with, uh, with mortar last fall. Certainly in the spring, it was, it was very embarrassing to go out there and see all the stuff that was, had come out of the, the, uh, the joints. And even on the stone the top right, you can see a horizontal crack. So we've thought a lot about how we can save these stones, and in fact, it uh, is not going to be really 
very possible because you wouldn't want to put something like that back in. Uh, the south side is probably more deteriorated. Um, some of these slides may be a little bit mixed up because when you, <laughs> there's so many situations that uh, it's not, um, it's easy to get confused. But again, the same sort of thing is happening. And even the steel stairs um, need to be, the supports need to be redone in order to make this work. We've looked at just leaving the central route open um, and just fixing it, but in fact, we need to waterproof the whole thing. Uh, that's a slab just upside, at, at the top, outside the exit door, and even right there, all those cracks um, are allowing water in. And what, what has happened is that the treads have tilted back in to the next riser above, so there's water lying in there uh, and freezing and thawing, getting into the, the joint. Uh, just more of the same kind of thing. I mean, they look neat, but they don't work neat. Um, and we've got a lot of cracking going on. So that's what the uh, solution on the central stair looks like. Um, it's picked up a lot of dirt like the other stairs have, so it's starting to look like it's not there. But um, it's still a patch, and you can tell. So what we'd like to do is use this MG1260 regular mix um, material. It's waterproof, flexible, two-part mix, resistance to oils and salts, non-toxic, water clean up before it sets, which would be an important thing because we don't want a lot of splatter setting around the stairs. It'd be one pore situation. It can be troweled into the reverse sloped treads. Um, it won't compromise exiting. It uh, can be applied to limestone, although the spec sheets say don't mix limestone with it. That was clarified yesterday by the manufacturer that it's a matter of you don't try and, as with concrete, you fill it with aggregate. This is not the case. And if we use iron oxide pigments, we would be able to uh, tint it. Now, I can't guarantee that we can tint it perfectly, and you know very well that that is a, a, a challenge, but what we'd like to do is make a test patch so that we, whether it's on these stairs or where it's something else that we could, uh, could make it work. Um, if you go around to the back of the Tourist Information Bureau on the south deck, they've used a Tremco traffic coating, and it really, if you, if you look closely at it, it really just doesn't look good. It looks like a plastic kind of surface. We went up to Fort Henry and looked at a Simco, similar Tremco traffic coating, and uh, the coloration there is, is not good, although it look, does look like it'll do a job. It looks very thin, and it looks like you've maybe melted on some, some plastic. So we would like to uh, work with the city staff to uh, try a test patch of this material and, and color it differently because it's a different stone, a different situation. This central staircase, of course, is uh, protected from the weather and um, probably gets more maintenance. But uh, so that's what we'd like to do, see whether it works. Um, the long-term vision is that the facilities have got this in their three-year capital plan, but it's, of course, subject to funding, and that's something that's uh, a council decision. We would like to have approval to do this within three years and have it done within five years. So this kind of solution looks like it would get us to that point. When that work is done, it's going to be very expensive, but we'll be removing the whole stair, including the base, opening up to the basement, really, and reconstructing um, based upon the design that uh, would be developed. So thank you very much. That's the plan. I'll be, stay around for questions if there are any. Well, thank you very much. Um, there may be questions. I'm sure there will be questions. Mac, you want to start? Say those, those stone stairs are granite, not limestone? The stairs on the north and south are limestone. And I believe, that I don't I haven't done a geological test, but it's a completely different stone, the center stairs. Right, but, but they're, all, they're all limestone though, right? I'm not sure of that, Mac. Okay. 
just the way they wear. I, 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 I yeah, no, it. it's it's certainly a a much harder harder mm. stone. Maybe it's a blue blue limestone as opposed to the what whatever. Yeah. Um, so the long range plan is to completely rebuild them, though. Yep. That's so. And you you would subject to yes. yeah, of course, yes. So you wouldn't be. Uh, so if you're going to put some kind of finish on it, you wouldn't be reusing those stones again. So you would be using new stones at that point. Yes. If um, we can save any of the existing newer stones, but if you take a look at the original ones, they yeah. are really very broken. Right. But if you're going to be putting some kind of a coating on them, then you probably wouldn't be able to reuse them anyways. Probably I guess not. you could sandblast them, maybe, well, get them off. Turn them upside down. Turn them upside down, yeah. yeah okay. Um, Another product I've used on similar situations is called uh, GACO, um, G-A-C-O, and they've used it on quite a few uh, metal roofs, and I've used it on uh, on porches and patios, and it's totally leak-free. It's a really good product as well. But again, it looks like that plastic look like uh, you showed, I think, at the uh, Fort Henry. You know, it doesn't it doesn't show any grain or anything through the, you know, through the stone. I don't know if this will this new this product you're considering will it show any of the grain of the stone, or will it just sort of be trying to paint it gray sort of to match in? Um, no, I think what we're trying to do is get a color that makes it right. disappear okay, as yeah, best we yeah, can, but we yeah. would be coating everything. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not some of it would telegraph through, I would suppose it would depend upon how thick it is, but exactly, I, I yeah. suspect not. Okay. We're going to be troweling it in to fill a wedge mm -hmm. to tilt the stair back out. Right. And there are cracks in that tread now, and, and we'll be going over the edge. So in order for that to work, we're going to be filling all those joints with some sort of caulking. Right. You, you might want to look at the Geico product as well. It, it's, it's, I've had really good results with it. Thank you. Perhaps I should say that this is, uh, our procedures here are quite informal. Anybody can ask questions, express opinions. Uh, and, and comments, so by all means, just uh, feel free to ask questions and make comments. Jane? I'm um, just wondering, planning to do that test code, and if you could let us know so we could have a look at it, maybe give some feedback. Be certainly willing to do that through staff. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, if council didn't approve the money, um, then this would be sort of a, almost a permanent fix. But of course, we're expecting council will approve a rebuild. But is that the, the, the idea behind it, that if by chance um, we just can't uh, do it in the budget, that this would last for quite a few years? Yes. I'm, I can't say how many years. But you know, you have to be careful with hmm doing a really good temporary fix because then you don't ever really do the real fix. Um, I, I have a couple of comments. I guess from the heritage point of view, uh, painting limestone is not good. Uh, I mean, the, uh, Kingston's stone uh, work is, is kind of uh, what we're known by and, and uh, we get uh, so many tourists coming to City Hall and uh, the, the idea of, of having them uh, uh, exposed to painted steps is, is certainly undesirable. But I understand uh, in the short term we may have to do things we don't want to do in the long run. Um, I guess, um, well, one sort of question I had is it sounds as if you're proposing to uh, to apply this uh, coating um, throughout, rather than just in the joints, where presumably almost all of the uh, penetration uh, takes place. I mean, is it possible to say we're going to use this stuff, but we're just going to put it in the joints? I don't think so, sir. I think that um, because of the way the treads slope, back in, the rain gets on that and goes right for that mm -hmm. joint uh, and goes across cracks and then it sits there. We want to tilt it back so it runs off to the street where it should. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if we were just doing joints, we'd, you'd have a very 
motley, messy situation, and you wouldn't be sure that you had been able to cover all the mm -hmm. issues. Well, um, I understand uh, perhaps when you're doing tests, you might do a test of just joints only and see how it works or compares. I mean, it's not going to be as good, but it might, uh, uh, might be better. Uh, my other comment is the problem that City Hall has is the same problem that uh, St. George's has and Queen's University has and the courthouse has. And there's a lot, of, uh, hopefully, a lot of experience and expertise uh, uh, built up uh, in the past that I hope you're able to access and benefit from. Um, certainly, St. George's uh, replaced a lot of their limestone steps with granite. And uh, not all of them, but some of them. And, and there are maybe there are other stones that are still limestone but don't crack so readily and, and work a bit better. So there are, there are certainly a number of options, but uh, that's all down the line, I think. So other comments? Yeah. Just just mentioned St. George's. I'd just like to say that uh, I think I think St. George did a great job in the restoration. In my opinion made a huge mistake by putting granite stairs in. Because you walk down there and it's exactly what you see, is this dark granite, totally square mm -hmm. and concise, and that's not what limestone is. Mm -hmm. I hope the city doesn't go, I mean, I know that it'll last longer, but limestone stairs done properly, will last for 100, 120 years, and um, I'll let my grandkids worry about it. <laughs> but I would definitely not support granite stairs myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I, you know, I understand the, the arguments. Other comments, questions? Uh, members of the public, of course. Sorry, yes. Um. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to Mr. Crothers for the explanation. Um, this is all new to me. Um, so I do have one question. Um, I believe that the central stairs to the building were replaced at some point or other, right? Whereas we're talking on the north and south, like th this is the south one you're talking about, right out through this door, right? And then the north one comes off Memorial Hall. Those are the original stones, right, from 1840. Whereas the central stairs, they've been replaced, as I understand it, when the building was restored in 1973 or somewhere of that era. So they're granite and these are limestone. Is that accurate? As far as I know, yes. I don't know exactly the whether there's been. I, I know that there are some new stones out there that have been replaced, and you can take a look at them, and they're very, very evident. Um, but there's been no major structural and stair tread replacement here and at the north end that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, thank you for that answer. Um, so I'm going to offer an alternative scenario for discussion, uh, I mean, not necessarily here, but maybe among staff and, and council, is to consider replacing the entire staircases of the north and south um, uh, exit and access, and to, to come up with a cost uh, scenario on that. And then my other point is that if you do that, and if you do stop the leaks, then you're gaining some space in the basement, which now you don't have, right? It's a small amount of space, but it is useful for something. And then my final point is, in you know, the obvious one, I mean, I've never even used those staircases. They're really emergency exits, right? Is that you would do it one at a time, right? You wouldn't have them both down at the same time. Sounds obvious, but maybe just get it on the record that that you know, should be the case. And then, just sort of as, as a postscript, when St. Mary's did their renovation in 1993, they replaced the, the entire front steps with granite, I believe, right? So again, going along with Matt's point, maybe it doesn't look very good, but it's sure solid, right? So maybe it does last longer. It's not maybe in keeping with the original design. So perhaps there has to be some trade-offs when we're doing you know, this kind of work. So uh, thank you, uh, and hopefully, um, you know, this it, I think it's an important project, but it needs to be approached with care. Thanks. Uh, 
Um, one further comment. Uh, we committee has looked at the um, repair of steps at, I think, Jackson Hall at Queens. And uh, uh, what they did there was, I mean, some of the stones were cracked and so on, so, uh, but some were not. So the plan, I believe, was to um, uh, keep the uh, good stones. And in some cases, um, a cracked stone could be salvaged by cutting uh, you know, to make them a bit smaller and, and putting them together. So they weren't quite as big as they originally were. Uh, otherwise, I think they were replacing them with local limestone. Uh, but I think the intent was to rebuild the foundation uh, to give much better support. You know, a, a deep foundation going down to bedrock and using uh, uh, appropriate, you know, thick... Uh, bedding of uh, soft mortar or something like that so, to, so that uh, in future the, the stresses that lead to cracking will be hopefully much best. So again, there's a, uh, an approach that was taken there which you know, sounded pretty good to me, but uh, there are many alternatives, I guess. Right, any other comments, questions? Thank you very much then. Um, yeah, so all that's left are the working reports. There's a Heritage Properties Working Report and on page 223 and 4. I don't, don't know whether Ryan wants to speak to that or whether we'll just uh, have a motion to uh, receive the report. So could we have a motion to receive the uh, Heritage Properties Working Group Report? All those in favor? Thank you. Um, other business? I don't see any other business. Notices, motion, and so on. Next meeting, Wednesday, September 19th. Um, and then adjournment. A motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thanks very much.